All right, guys, Hatch Grabber here again today. I hope you're all doing well and enjoying your day so far. Welcome back to Valorant Rostermania. Loads going on right now. Confirmation from around the world as to exactly what the plan is, what the rules are with regard to Rostermania when these teams have to get confirmed. Going to dive into that today. But also, some teams that have made it into franchising already confirming changes. Carl Nine changing a few things around. Marved is looking for a team after all. An exit revealing they were going to get picked up by G2 before all that drama happened. Very much intrigued to your thoughts in the comment section below. Hit the like button if you enjoy. Subscribe if you're new as always. I'd greatly appreciate it. Gain like a thousand subs in the last two days. Let's keep on going. Just about to get to 26k. Optic, of course, no longer going to be a team, unfortunately, going into next season. But these are the roster construction rules going into 2023. So we heard these dates a while ago that by October the 15th, the teams have to submit effectively a soft roster lock. They have to kind of have a good idea what their team's going to be just to show that, okay, yes, they can do the visas. They can do whatever work permits are required for whatever players they want. So they've got about three weeks or so to lock down a decent idea of what their roster is going to be. Most teams I expect in three weeks time will have a pretty solidified roster. But there's no need for them to actually lock it in quite immediately. The transfer window is from in a few days time on September the 26th. That's when players can officially I guess get signs until February the 1st. So they've got the hard roster date where they have to confirm their roster officially is in February but they have to have a good idea what it's going to be in October and usually these periods move rather quickly because if you're a franchise team and you've got Ye and others on the market like you've got to move quick if you don't you don't get the players that are the best so these teams will move fast but teams in tier two and stuff might well take their time because in tier two we don't know how many organizations are going to be left in terms of big organizations there could be big name free agents on the market for quite some time to come so the roster must consist of no less than six team members so I guess five players plus a sub and then one GM or coach of course you can have both if you want like 100 Thieves I'm sure will have if DDK and Sean Gare stay as I expect they will then there's a mid-season transfer window in March until I guess the end of well there's a few days in March really I guess after Major 1 or after the kickoff event in Sao Paulo Brazil then there's effectively like you can already make changes if you want and your team isn't very good so I guess there's further transfer windows potentially to come but um, they've got to make their mind up relatively quickly and also to note there is now a minimum age requirement I don't know exactly know what it was this past season but of course Trent and others like Alpha Jeff for example competed at 17 and um, they I think a couple of those guys are now going to be 18 going into this new season and they will be allowed like Alpha Jeff even though he's not going to be 18 I believe next year will still be able to play because if you played this last season you can get like parental permission and you're good to go. Let's dive into some of the rumors then Exit first of all they confirmed that yes they didn't get into franchising as of course we knew or the partnership program as they are describing it so sad stuff really like at Exit coming to a close after such a great uh, end of the season at least they had. As they say at the end though, as for the future of Exit Valorant, we will continue competing and winning in VCT game changes with their female roster with Exit Purple and we are evaluating our options for 2023. Kind of saying that they're not sure yet whether they actually want to do you know, the tier 2 stuff. Teams I'm sure will take their time because yes the tier 2 ascension circuit has been announced. Some orgs will stay with some TSM for example say that they will but um, you know, others might decide to make up their mind as to whether they really think it's worth it going through the tier two side of course because a lot of these orgs put all their eggs into the basket of actually getting into the pro side and of course deaf and that entire team now are some of which restricted some of which unrestricted it depends on how the contracts worked out with the players deaf is unrestricted as an IGL but it's really difficult for a lot of these guys because I mean let's say North America there are five IGL spots like I mean deaf of course UK player might go back to the European scene but there's no real UK org that made it through so it's going to be challenging for a lot of these players that were part of great teams in the last couple of years. Let's talk Sentinels real quick. Kanpeki of course, now an unrestricted free agent from Sentinels. Of course he was in that roster briefly, came in from a crew, then they made some changes. Zelsis was in. They changed things around before the LCQ. Kanpeki is now free to go where he likes. And then this is interesting from the Steel perspective on T1, just like kind of confirming the idea that we kind of knew the T1 were looking to make changes for Steel. And um, yes, all the Duolingo practice has not paid off for him. He's not going to be on that Korean core roster next season he's going to try and be an IGL elsewhere we'll see how that goes for him but it's going to be difficult as I say there are not many IGL leader roles in the North American region this also on Fnatic and definitely a lot to talk on Fnatic here because um, Enzo of course Fearoth as briefly known is now also no longer going to be part of that team so Durka Boaster I believe they signed like three year deals or something with Fnatic to stay around for quite some time Mystic is already gone like um, Alpha Gel, we don't know what his future is going to be but Enzo's also gone so 
they might be building around those core three. Alpha Jet could have offers elsewhere. Who really knows what's going to happen? There's a couple of Turkish teams might try and build a Turkish super squad with CNED. Who knows what they try and do? But um, yeah, there are plenty of options right now. But Fnatic already committing a team that did make it through to some changes at the very least. And Cloud9 from the North American side doing a similar thing. Curry is going to go, as he says here, exploring options, restricted free agent going forwards. He, of course, joined this team rather briefly. Not that much success. He's going to go. Vanity and the like, I believe, for now, are still going to stay as it stands. But Mitch, also, he's looking for offers. So it is a strange one because, of course, Leaf is there. You've got Vanity there. Some Still some great players in terms of how they want to build their roster. But, like, um, you know, what free agents do you want? Can you have Ye and Leaf if you wanted to offer the back for Ye? Because, like, look, they're going to offer this guy a lot of money. I'm sure Ye woke up this morning, checked his DMs, and the money was flying in. So Mitch is going to be gone, as he says here. With that said, can IGL can play any agents? He's looking for offers. But, you know, look, these guys have to be adaptable and open because there are not many offers out there for these guys, or at least not many opportunities, especially with only five North American teams making it at the end of the day. Now, speaking of Optic real quick, here we go from Kojo, who's at the team director and project lead for Fnatic as it stands, saying, um, well, kind of replying to Ye's tweet we saw earlier today, where he said, yeah, with the recent news, Optic has been denied. I am looking for partnership teams in North America and EMEA. And um, as he says, hmm, interesting, right? Maybe thinking, well, and could we get him into Fnatic? Not sure that makes that much sense. But like when a guy like Ye is on the market, a lot of orgs have to at least open the door to the possibility of where this guy's going to go. So I'm sure his agents are going to have a rather hard bit of work over the coming weeks. Now, earlier today, we mentioned the fact that everyone on Optic had said that they were a restricted free agent, pretty much, apart from Marved. And there was some speculation as to why would he go down the streaming route? Has he effectively been banned because of these kind of match fixing allegations from a couple of years ago? Like, what exactly is the story there, right? Nobody really knows. And uh, with Marv tweeting, this, it kind of implies that yes, he's still looking for offers. So there's been some weird theories that maybe some organizations have kind of said to right, look, we won't sign any of these kind of CS guys because like there were some CS players, Marv included, that had dodgy pasts, let's just say in Counter-Strike. They came to Valorant in the early days and nobody really seemed to care anymore and they just got on with their career. But when franchising comes around or partnership program or whatever, there might be some sort of soft thing in place that says like don't go near these guys, we don't want the reputational damage like uh, to the brand or to the scene, I suppose, for whatever reason. But there's never really been confirmation that any of this is actually going on and now Marv tweeting this says yes look I'm of course looking for offers so I guess that kind of implies that at least he believes there will be offers on the table I think there very well should be but um yeah again saying that this optic team won't be together I don't know how many of them will stay together whether just Victor and Crashy is whether any of them will go to different regions like um you know hopefully we get some matchups between these guys in the future because it's going to be quite the reunion no doubt now this is the phase side of the story because uh, Superman and others like um, there's so much going on, I'm sure, as you guys can tell. And by the time this video goes live, there's probably more that's happened. But I'll do my best to keep you guys updated on everything over the coming days. Hit the subscribe button. You guys know the drill. But um, yeah, so Superman on FaZe, of course, an organization that didn't make it. Strange, really, to think that FaZe, as big of an organization as they are, like, we never really thought they were even going to make it, right? Like, I think it was expected, really, that FaZe wouldn't make it. Because, um, I mean, look, right, chooses organizations. It seems generally that have a pretty solid history and perceived future. FaZe maybe didn't necessarily meet that criteria. But um, still, Superman, even Dicey, I believe, went on to say as well that he's also, an, well, a restricted free agent. So FaZe are looking to ship these guys off. Again, I've just gone through so many names today that were massive players in the market in the last couple of seasons. And now the likes of Dicey, Superman, all these players are now restricted free agents on the market. What are they going to do? And Superman's even already opening up the possibility here of playing it through the Ascension Leagues. Getting onto one of these tier two teams and grinding his way through it. Maybe FaZe stay right, or maybe they stay as part of FaZe, but of course, as Dicey describes, they have allowed me to seek new opportunities as a restricted free agent, and um, of course, look, we don't know what FaZe's future is going to be, whether they stay around, whether they don't. I don't think FaZe have made a comment on that yet. If they have, let me know in the comment section below, because there's a lot going on right now. I may miss one thing or another, but um, yeah, so FaZe are potentially planning at least these two guys, Superman and Dicey, are like, look, do we just run it back in, in effectively the challenger scene to try and make it in if these guys don't get offers right? Because great players, Dicey and Superman, men, are they quite of the caliber to get into the 25 North American pros that are going to be on those teams? Like um, maybe they get a spot elsewhere in the world, but it's, it's going to be difficult, right? And many questions for a lot of these guys right now, and I'm sure they're concerned about that. And understandably so, right? That's what partnership and franchising causes whenever it hit esports. Now, this is another remarkable story here to close out the video with, because you guys, of course, well know at this point that G2 was going to get a North American slot that um, seemingly was going to be instead of where Leviathan presently is, but after the 
drama with Carlos Ocelot, who I will CEO of the organization, parting with Andrew Tate, doubling down all the drama. Riot didn't want to be associated with that. Apparently, they had like um, effectively a last minute meeting at Champions in Istanbul to describe, okay, look, should we do this? Should we not do this? And terminated their intentions to partner with G2, which is um, honestly a remarkable turn of events. It's crazy how this isn't like a, a bigger story than it is, but there's so much else going on. Now, apparently, Xset were going to go to G2. G2 had seemingly showed interest in buying out the entire Exet lineup. I think I've seen this through a couple of different places now, but even as Zekin says, having to explain to my mum how Andrew Tate cost me a job is not what I thought I'd be a month ago, right? So apparently, Zekin and either the entire Exet team or the majority of it were going to get bought out by G2. Then they lost the spot in franchising, and now Exet are now, well, obviously they can't go there anymore, so they're now free agents, right? So, uh, like, um, yeah, the domino effect is absolutely crazy in esports, and, uh, well, this is another example, but yes, very much enjoy your thoughts in the comment section below. That's going to do it for this morning's video. There may be more to come later today, who knows? Otherwise, I'll keep you guys updated tomorrow because it's a very changeable environment we find ourselves in at the moment. Very much enjoy your thoughts in the comment section below. Hit the like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you are new. Take care, and I'll see you next time.